Have you ever wondered which is more profitable, fishing or hunting in Palea? Well, we tested it to find out. Stay tuned. Incoming customer detected. Keep your eyes open, boys. We need to have a serious talk. Ah, Palea, the life sim that sucks you in. I've been keeping myself busy exploring the world of Palea and what it has to offer. Between relationship building, resource gathering, and spending time with my wife and friends in game, I've experienced quite a few things, most of them enjoyable. However, I am also a gamer who likes to dig into things and figure them out. This is especially true when it comes to taking apart the systems that generate an income in games. Fallout 76, for instance, is a game I've spent almost 4,000 hours in, and I've discovered so many ways of making credits efficiently that all my characters are what would be considered rich. EVE Online? Multi-billionaire there. Star Wars Galaxies? More money than I can waste in a good cantina. Whatever game I do, I like to take a screwdriver to it and understand how to make it work. So far in Palea, I've generated over half of a million coins. So, with that in mind, I thought it'd be fun to do a little experiment in Palea with all of you. Now, there are a lot of guides out there which try to claim this thing or that is the best way of making coins in Palea. Fishing? Sure. Hunting? Well, everyone claims that it's S tier. Cooking? Uh, heck, with a good party of people making cakes, you could be rolling in more coins than you're allowed to hold. The coin cap in the game is 300,000, by the way. So today, we're going to see which of fishing and hunting is the best for making money when compared directly hour to hour. Here's what I decided might be the fairest comparison method. First, I'll put together whatever equipment is needed. For fishing, that's going to be glowworms and a few different types of foods that can help with your fishing activity. I've personally found fisherman's brew and sashimi to be the easiest and most cost-effective boosts when just out trying to gather cash. If you're looking for bigger catches, such as trying to consistently get rare and epic fish, you're probably going to want to go for one of the better accessories. But for practical money-making purposes, the basic stuff's going to do just fine. So my kitty, Starry, and I headed off to Bahari Bay to find a good fishing hole to dig into. I chose this spot near the old lighthouse for no other reason than that it was a spot that I pulled 10 unicorn fish out of previously. I was hoping for a little luck getting another of those bad boys, but it was ultimately to no avail this time around. That's okay. We're not after anything specific. Whatever fish wants on the hook, we're going to bring in. I spent an entire real life hour in this spot, casting out the line over and over. That's a single Palean day, by the way, if you weren't aware already. From noon until noon, I drug those fish out one by one. I used the foods when my buffs would fall, although there were a few catches between me missing the fact that the buff fell. No big deal, really. It's not like it's absolutely necessary. It just makes things a little bit easier. And that's about it. Even without the buffs, I managed to catch everything that hooked, including a few chests. Not bad. I like catching those chests. There's always some nice looking decorations inside. I did my best to go as hard as I could, only taking a minute break here and there to make sure that my hand got a little bit of rest. Repetitive stress injuries are no joke, folks. Take care of those hands. By the time all was said and done, and the noon hour of the next day arrived, I had used 120 glow worms total. That works out to be a fish caught every 30 seconds or so. Not shabby. 
We'll take a look at the totals and crunch all the numbers from all of that in just a few minutes. Next up, hunting. As with the fishing setup, I made as many standard arrows as I thought might be necessary, ultimately going for 500 total. I'm a blind guy after all, so my miss ratio is a lot higher than other folks out there might end up having. I also made sure to grab some more focus food for the trip uh, to keep me as buffed as I could. Oh, you precious pickled potatoes, there's nothing finer. Off to Whispering Banks we go. I chose this area because even post nerf, it's the best area to find herds of Cernix that are one-shot kills. There might be more critters available in Bahari Bay, but a lot of them take at least a few shots or the use of fine arrows or better, and we're here for cost effectiveness. The one issue with hunting when compared to fishing is that you will unfortunately have to deal with competition. While it's true you will get rewarded with the same items as another person if you both take a shot at the animal, you still have to actually take the shot. Simply being in the same space as the other person will not do. This breeds a bit of a problem since you can't constantly be shooting at random bits hoping to get something tagged. After all, the system has to believe that you are actually participating in trying to hit that particular thing. I think there are much better ways that this kind of system could be handled. I mean, off the top of my head, one change that they could make would be for teammates to get the loot as long as they are within the same small area and have their bow equipped. Sure, this might lead to some exploits, but I think that it would be a far better system than what we have currently. Teaming adds absolutely no value for hunting whatsoever, and that's a bit of an issue with a cozy game with such a major focus on being cooperative. Regardless, as with fishing, I did my best to go as hard as I could for the hour time allotted. When I would notice another person or two hunting in the area, I would go into the Bahari Bay map and come back in with the hopes that it would bring me to a new server. If you weren't aware, that is what ends up happening. In the end, I ended up using 384 standard arrows, a fair bit of food, and gained a level of hunting. Now, as I said, I do miss sometimes, more frequently than others, so your mileage may vary a bit depending on how good of a shot you are. However, I do think that this is a pretty good representation of experience for those who are dedicating themselves to hunting for a time. It looks like a pretty decent amount of loot, but how does it compare when crunching the numbers to fishing within the same constraints of time? For an hour of fishing, I was able to sell 11,317 coins worth of fish while using 120 glowworms. For an hour of hunting, I was able to sell 7,762 worth of loot while using 384 standard arrows and doing one repair for about 100 gold. Total repair costs by the time everything ended worked out to be about 150 gold. When I ran the same test previously, I ended up with 9,291 coins. Wasn't quite as lucky with the spawns this time, I guess. Now on the surface, it seems like fishing would give you the best bang for the buck, right? But let's break things down a little bit further. After all, you have to consider the outlay of costs for the pure profit aspects. Glowworms are valued at 25 coins each. That's an important number to consider. That's a lot of coins for one worm. However, you can make your own worms in the glowworm farms, reducing the cost significantly, depending on the food that you use. I like to use sashimi because you get, for a high value fish, three pieces of food that will give three glowworms each. That's nine glowworms total. 
the cost of sashimi when using a fish with an 85 coin value and adding in the price of spices at 15 coins and rice at 27 coins works out to be 127 coins total. That's 42 coins for each single sashimi created. However, if you're gathering the spices yourself and fishing up the fishies yourself using a glowworm that you've farmed yourself, your costs will break down to be more along the lines of nine coins each. So let's run with that number in the figures. Since I used 120 glowworms and if I run with the cost of nine coins each, the total amount of worms I used would be 1,080 coins. I sold 11,317 coins worth of fish. I also paid 52 coins to repair the rod once everything was done. That brings my pure profit of that one hour of fishing to 10,185 coins. Even if we go with the idea of you purchasing the glow worms in some kind of way, those 120 glow worms would run you about 3,000 coins. That would still make the total profit of the hour of fishing 8,317. But for my purposes, it's that 10,185 number. Hunting garnered 7,762 coins. Standard arrows have a value of two coins each, and I ended up using 384. And the repair costs for the bow worked out to be 150 coins. When taking the costs out of the loot, we ended up with a total profit of 6,844. Again, your own personal mileage on this result may vary, depending on how good of a shot you are and the RNG aspects of the spawn rates, as well as whatever competition is in the area. On paper, it would seem fishing is far more of a valuable endeavor than hunting, right? Well, there are a couple of things to consider with it. First, you have a little bit more of an initial outlay to get started with this kind of fishing. You need to have a steady supply of foodstuffs to get the glowworms going, and then you also have to wait for a while before those worms really start coming in. With how I have things set up on my property, I can get up to 720 glowworms a day but I have a lot of time to play and I can feed those babies like crazy. That's 10 glowworm farms being fed sashimi with the highest value fish going into the recipe. That nets me three glowworms per machine per hour, 24 seven. That's quite a bit of sashimi making, which can be really tedious and time consuming. Not to mention having a lot of fish I catch going into it instead of just being sold for profit. It also means finding the sashimi recipe as well, which isn't necessarily easy to do. I've tested all of this out multiple times, and in each case, fishing actually won out over hunting in regards to how much per hour came in. However, and this is a very big however, Fishing is extremely tedious. The reason you do end up with as much as you do is because you're constantly throwing the bait out one after the other in an endless cycle of the same damn thing. Over and over again, you cast out, bring it in and cast out every 30 seconds or so, staring at the same spot and the same bit of world, throwing that line out to bring the catch in. But each time you do, if you're fishing in the right spots, can bring you 85 coins. More if you're lucky to get an uncommon, rare, or epic catch. There's also no competition to it. You just stand there and do it. Hunting, on the other hand, relies a lot more on your personal skill level with the bow, server spawn rates, and other players competing with you for the same deer. If you're on a server without other people hunting at the same time and in the same spot, you're gonna make a lot of coins. You're also seeing different things moving around, testing things out and so on. Another aspect to hunting that I didn't do anything with in this test 
is the reality that you can gather materials while you're hunting. If you see a mushroom, grab it. You can sell it for eight coins. Need some of that copper? Go for it. Heck, you, you can even sell that, the stones, the flints, and more for even more profits. There are frankly tons of things that you can grab while you're hunting, and those can and do add up. A lot. By the time that you've grabbed it all, you might be on the same line or more as the person standing there tossing out a bait over and over and over again. I think in the end, what all of this proves is that whether you prefer to hunt down the Chapas and Cernex or throw your line into the water, you're going to end up making about the same amount of coins per hour when you dedicate your time to it. It's really just going to depend on your own personal preference of what you'd like to focus on. Now, if only bugs were worth the same kind of time. <laughs> I hope this little experiment was helpful and gives you some food for thought. Send me a celebration cake if it was worthy. Make sure you subscribe, like this video, all that kind of good jazz and junk because it really does help me out in the end. And until next time, keep safe out there, have fun, and much love your way. detour out there to talk to that overseer of yours this land is his land and none else are welcome enemy sighted guys they're here okay oh, I don't know. where'd you come from <laughs>